gonna go ahead and get my peach cobbler started. It's not gonna take very long, so the first thing I'm gonna actually do is use two 20, 20 is this? 29 ounce cans of sliced peaches. Funny story. I just came back from celebrating my husband's birthday and we made a few stops. So we make one of our little pit stops and he goes in the store and you know I kind of hang out in the car and I'm chilling or whatever. So he comes back out and he's like, here, I got you something to snack on. I love peaches. Now, I don't know, I, th I think this is a home brand from I think that Schulenburg, Texas. Uh, I think that's actually where we stopped at just a regular corner store and this is what they had in there and my first thought was i bet i can make a good peach cobbler with it so he was he's like no the point was for you to have something to snack on so that's where i actually came up with the idea of you know what i'm gonna go ahead and make a peach cobbler um when i get back so anyway i started to use those peaches and i said nah you got them for me to eat so i better do that so anyway, um, two cans of that, don't shoot me, a full stick of butter, and I'm actually going to put, this is not measured either guys, so I'm going to put a little bit of vanilla extract in there as well. Nutmeg. Nutmeg is very strong, so you don't have to use a whole heap of it. It's really pungent. So, um, that's about enough. You can barely see that, but even still, that's about enough nutmeg. But I am definitely going to use cinnamon. Can't have a peach cobbler without that cinnamon taste in there. So, that's my cinnamon. The last thing I'm going to add to my peaches, and these peaches, guys, are in syrup. Now, you can use the ones that are actually in juice. Um, I just rather use the ones that are in syrup. Just because I guess I want to knock their socks off with the sweetness. So anyway, a little brown sugar. And that's it. So what I'm going to do is take this over to the stove now. Let that heat through. And pretty much let it stay on the stove about 15 minutes. 15 minutes should be long enough for everything to incorporate. And get completely mixed in. And of course get that butter melted in there. One thing with me and desserts. I don't skip on the butter. You know what? I need to bring that dog in. I apologize. My dog's out there having a friendly conversa conversation with the neighbor's dogs. So anyway, that's mixed in. And I'm going to go ahead and put this on the stove. Like I said, it's going to take about 15, 20 minutes for it to completely cook through the way I want it to and then I'll take it from the heat. So as far as my <clears throat> excuse me my pie crust is concerned, once again, this is a weekday meal. I'm not making a crust today. I love these though. They taste just as good. So this is just for the regular Pillsbury pie crust. Um, and there's actually two in here. I'm gonna use a total of four. Um, I have my full pan. Guys, let me tell you something. These pans have sometimes that rubber film or glue is actually what it is. That's on the inside because there's paper in there. Wash your foil pans. That, that's my whole point. Just wash your foil pans. You know, nobody wants to get, you know, at a potluck or whatever and freaking glue is in the bottom of the pan. I just sprayed it with a little bit of butter flavored um, cooking spray. But yeah, wash your foil pans. Wash any pan, but just because it's a throwaway pan doesn't mean it doesn't need to be washed uh, before using also because 
time. Ain't nobody got time for that, that, that glue in there. I'm trying to move pretty fast. I think my peaches are actually ready. And all I'm going to do is, um, if I can get it out, first of all, unroll this. Now, a lot of people want to make theirs a little thinner. If it doesn't fit, you know, okay, I get it. But... I like crust, you know, that's the whole purpose of a peach cobbler for me is to get some crust, so. I'm going to stretch it out to fit. It's not going to cover the whole thing, but I am going to try to get it up the sides. May not look perfect in here, but we're going to get it in here, nevertheless. So yeah, basically, put your crust in there, push it up the sides. Make sure you got plenty. And while this one is not enough, let me go ahead and open my second one and finish this. So, we got it in here. Like I said, up the sides, we got it pretty much covered, so we're ready to go. The um, peaches are ready. Let me go ahead and put these in the pot. I mean, I'm sorry, in the crust. Now, what about that juice now? We want that juice, okay? One thing for sure, we want the juice of the peach pop. Maybe not as much as we want peaches. Actually, a lot of people don't even want the peaches as much as they want that juice and that crust. You notice I didn't preheat because I'm going to let this actually stay in the oven almost an hour. Now, what I've done is actually just cut up. Um, as you know, I told you I had four. All I've done is just cut up another one of the um, crust that I have and I'm just gonna lay it in like this um, this gives you that gorgeous effect that you see on peach cobbler I want to get them kind of close because I want a lot of crust on there I don't want you to see hardly any peaches under there until that juice starts coming out So like I said, we're just laying them like this. Not all the way to the edge, but we'll cover that. Because we're going to take the others, let me get a shorter piece, and lay them crossways. But my first one is always right there at the edge. Same thing on this side. And put that first one right there on the edge. And we're just gonna keep laying them across this way until we have them all done. Let me cut up another one. Now we've got it, <clears throat> excuse me. We've got it covered. We got the crust on top. Um, a couple more things I'm gonna actually do. If I can catch hold to my voice, I can do it. Y'all, this is a little handy dandy spray margarine. You can just, you know, take and rub your butter on there. I'm just going to spray this margarine all over the top of my crust. And it don't matter how much you use or how much you want to use. But I'm spraying this spray margarine or butter. You can use butter. I'm just using this spray margarine as a quickie right now because it's real handy. All over the top of my crust. And on top of that, 
I'm just going to sprinkle a little bit of brown sugar. Doesn't take a whole lot. It's just a little. Just a little bit. You know what I like? My crust is actually going under the juice a little. Which is going to make it taste even better. All right. I'm putting this in the oven. My oven has been sitting at about 350 degrees. Um, it's going to stay in the oven. Um, uh oh, dropping things. It's going to stay in the oven uh, about 45, 50 minutes. And we'll check on it and make sure it's bubbly and golden. So we've taken the cobbler out and I actually left it in at 350 for about an hour and it has completely brown. You can see that little bit of brown sugar on top and it's giving you a gorgeous, gorgeous crust. So if you're anything like me, I wouldn't even fathom eating this without having a scoop of homemade vanilla ice cream with it. Anyway, that's that, that's your peach cobbler, semi-homemade. Like I said, you got plenty of crust on there to work with and you got plenty of peaches. And remember all that juice? It's gone, it's into the crust. Now that's why I said you did not wanna get rid of that juice. It's covered in butter, so you got the buttery crust on top. And that's it. And here in a few, uh, I'll try to get you a shot of it plated up. Thank you guys so much. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.